Hey guys, welcome back. Bite Size Builds Episode 2. I'm an Eggman, and today we're doing circles and curves and things because they're important, they're uh, interesting, they're fun, and they're a little bit intimidating if you haven't really done them before. So we're starting off the facility where we were building in the last episode, showing you the nerd pole leading to what we're going to start building this episode. We're going to do something that looks a little bit like this. I actually found this while I was looking for images of our floating wall kind of thing and said, you know what, that's kind of a neat uh, design, a neat concept with the nested circles and the triangles and things to make a magical looking sort of series of platforms upon which to do our magical things. So that's where we're starting and it's a great opportunity to talk about circles, which requires this. Now, if you've seen previous Minecraft videos of mine, you've probably heard me mention this site at some point. This is plots.co.uk. This is my go-to site for all things circles and ellipses. You can see it's got a number of different options. It'll even give you the layout patterns for things like observatories and towers and snowmen. But I'm always interested in just the basic stuff. The circles, the ellipses, the spheres, the ellipsoids. There's a torus design there. It's a great site to hop on and just kind of mess around with and see what you can come up with. You will probably need to give it some permissions if you use an ad block, app, add on, whatever. But assuming that you've set that up so that you can actually use the site properly, you get something like this. Now, this is like anything else in Minecraft. The smaller it is, the harder it is to make it look good. This is the base size circle. You can try and tell it to make smaller ones. It'll look even worse. But when we start going larger, you can see we can stretch it into an ellipse. We can stretch it back into a circle. We can make it larger. We can take a look at it. We can do whatever we want. And then when we arrive at a shape and a size that we're happy with, it's just a matter of counting the blocks in each of the segments and then duplicating that in your Minecraft world. It's really, really simple and straightforward and it produces a superior result. In the past, I've tried doing curves on my own. Uh, depending on what kind of curve it is, sometimes it works out not too badly, other times it looks absolutely horrible, and that's what we get that creates this sense that I can't do it because every time I try, it looks like crap. There's a way to break out of that, and it's to stop expecting that you're going to be able to do things that most artists can't even do reliably and that's do perfect circles by eye it's just one of those things there's nothing wrong with using an external tool for it now if you have a second monitor that's fantastic you can have plots on one of them one monitor and the game on the other if you only have one monitor you can still run minecraft windowed with plots in the background and get the information you need as you play and then expand the window when you're done. It's fantastic. You can see the larger the circle, the smoother it looks, the better it looks. This is sort of the whole idea between high def versus low def. It's the more pixels, the more cubes that you have, the smoother it looks. So once you get a shape that you're happy with and a size that you're happy with and you've got it in the game, all of a sudden things that looked impossible before are very, very possible. We're going to show you what that looks like with a little bit of time lapse stuff. Now here we are at the top of the nerd pole with the first circle. Now the camera angle is intentionally kind of back and low for a reason so that you can really see how smooth this circle can look even though it's just regular Minecraft blocks that are going into place. Now this is a temporary circle. We're doing a layout for the rest of what's to come. So that's why we're doing it out of dirt blocks. And we're actually going to switch over to nether rack because it's also readily accessible and easy to work with. It breaks almost faster than dirt, I think. And it's also a contrasting color so that we can keep things straight. If things happen to overlap at some point, we can still see what's supposed to be where and attached to what. So it's good. I like to work with two different colors of materials whenever I'm doing a layout, just for that reason. You can see we made a mess of the second circle, the circle with the nether rack. So now we have to go back and fix it, but that's fine because it's not complicated. The, sometimes the hardest part is just figuring out where you made the mistake, whether you chose the wrong size for the circle, which is what we're about to do with this third circle, or if you made a segment the wrong size, because it happens, you get kind of confused, 
groups of segments, things like that, you never know. So if you've got a simple way of arranging the circle, then it's easier to go back and troubleshoot if something goes wrong than if you're just kind of going by the seat of your pants, which I used to do and now I just can't be bothered. You can see from this angle is a pretty good, again, view of how round things can look, even though it's the regular Minecraft block size. So we're going to leave it there for this episode. If you want to be notified when I add the next episode, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on the social media. There's links for that in the information section below the video. Please leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.